Hello and welcome, my name is Connor from Luxia Smart Homes and today I'm going to show you how to build an effective presence automation. Now when I say motion automation, okay, or presence automation, you're probably thinking something like this. A classic PIR sensor, however we're not going to be using this because when it comes to more advanced presence automation, this simply won't do. When you're not moving very much or the movements that you're doing are very, very little, this is not going to see you. It's not going to know that you're there. It's gonna think you've left the room and it's gonna knock the lights off on you. So this is not what we want to use. This is what we want to be using. This is an MM wave sensor and this is actually ceiling mounted. Now you can get wall mounted ones as well. This is wired in to the mains so you will never have to worry about replacing batteries or making sure that you know it's not going to die on you unlike this one here. Much more reliable and as it is MM wave it can detect much smaller movements. Okay so here we are in a blank automation ready to add all of our different triggers and actions and whatnot. Now we've already set up our devices and we're going to use those devices in this automation to create an effective presence automation so we can effectively detect when someone is in or out of a room and using that information we're going to turn the lights on now again you could make this do whatever you want you could have it control the tv so when somebody gets up or you know goes to the bathroom during a show it'll automatically pause the tv whatever you want it to do but we're just going to use it for lighting so let's start with our triggers and we're going to be doing device triggers for this and we're going to be using the office occupancy sensor and we're going to be detecting when presence is present and we're going to give that an id and we're going to give that an id of motion and then we're going to do a second device trigger and again we're going to do the office occupancy sensor but we're going to do presence not present and we're going to give that an id of no motion and while we're here we're going to set a duration of one minute so there needs to have been no motion for at least one minute. So now we've got our two triggers set up here, we can go and add some actions. So we're going to add an action and we're going to add a choose action and we're going to add some options. So we've got two options, option one and option two. Now our first option is going to be for our motion. So we're going to do triggered by motion and then we're going to do add action, call service, light, turn on service and we're going to choose our entity and we're going to choose the office bulb and then we're going to set some parameters for this bulb so it will turn on how we want it to whenever motion is detected so first thing is the brightness we want that at a hundred percent and then we also want the color temperature here and we want it in kelvin and we want to set this to around here somewhere nice and warm there so now the bulb will turn on at 2500 Kelvin and it will come on at 100%. So now we want to add another condition in our second option and we're going to trigger by no motion. So this is what will happen when motion is no longer detected. And we're going to do call service and then we're going to do again light turn off and choose entity. And we're going to get our office bulb. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a transition on here and I'm going to put a transition of about 20 seconds on there. And the reason that I'm doing that is so that, again, if there is any false detections, the bulb isn't just going to snap off. It's going to fade over 20 seconds. OK, so that is the very, very basics of our automation. And so far, that's pretty much just a basic motion detection automation except we are using the more fancy MM wave sensor, so the accuracy is much higher than a standard motion sensor. However, we want to do a couple of things. Now, first things first, we wanna add a second trigger. And I'm gonna add here our desktop plug. So here we have our smart plug, and this is going to be used today for our presence automation. Now, you might be wondering how on earth is a smart plug going to detect presence? Now, this is actually a Miros smart plug, one of my all-time favorite smart plugs. Um, although it is a Wi-Fi smart plug, it doesn't require the cloud. It can be run locally, so it just runs on the local network, which is what I like. 
and it has built-in energy monitoring ability as well. So it can actually monitor the energy consumption of the device that it's plugged into. So that's the feature we're gonna be using today for our automation so that we can actually monitor when devices are active. So instead of just using a basic sensor, so we've actually got a sensor in this room and that is our primary kind of detector for this room. So that is the main thing that sets off the automation in here, that's what turns this light on. However, we have got some secondary kind of triggers that help us do that, and one of them is this smart plug here. So the computer is now plugged into a smart plug, and that is monitoring our energy consumption, okay? Now, not all smart plugs can monitor energy consumption, so if you are wanting to repeat this and you're wanting to follow along, make sure the plug that you purchase is able to monitor the consumption of a device. So we're gonna select our desktop plug and you can see all of the different things we've got here. Now we want to monitor our wattage. So if the desktop plug wattage changes, we want it to do something. Now, if it goes above say 20, then we want it to trigger this automation and we're gonna give it a trigger ID and we're gonna give it the same ID as our sensor, which is motion. Okay, so if the desktop is turned on, then it will trigger the motion action, which is to turn on the light. So if for some bizarre reason, our sensor failed to detect us, when we turn the computer on, it will still know somebody is in the room because the computer's on and it will turn on the light. So this is how we are making the automation more advanced. We're not just using one device to check for presence, we're using multiple devices, okay? And that is how you strengthen any automation, but in particular, a presence automation. The more things that you can check to make sure that someone is in the room, the more accurate the automation will run. Now within our action, we're going to add some other elements. So in our no motion action, we're going to rearrange our conditions here, okay? So we're gonna get rid of this triggered by condition for now, and we're gonna do another condition, and we're going to select the and condition okay so now we're testing if multiple conditions match so we're gonna put our triggered by condition in there so our no motion trigger and then we're going to add in a second condition as well okay so now we're going to add in a device condition and we're going to add in our desktop plug and see if this is above 20 watts okay so let's just change that to watts there so there we are. So if it's above 20 watts, so now we're testing if it's been triggered by no motion and if the desktop is off. So what this will do is it will catch any false triggers from our presence sensor. So if our sensor says that there is no motion, however the computer's on, so therefore we are quite likely still in the room, we want to leave the light on. So again, we are strengthening this automation by adding in multiple conditions. We're checking multiple variables to make sure that there is definitely no one left in that room. So coming back to our motion trigger, we're going to add another condition in here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna temporarily get rid of that condition. We're gonna do an and condition. And then we're gonna put our triggered by condition in there again. So when it's triggered by motion, so when the present sensor detects someone or the computer's turned on, it will do something. Okay, so now we've got a pretty solid automation. We've got multiple triggers. Okay, so we have multiple ways of turning the lights on and off. We've got multiple conditions set in here to make sure that there is definitely nobody left in the room so that we're not leaving anyone in darkness. But we're gonna go one step further and we're actually going to add a pressure sensor to this automation. Now, this wouldn't be used in the office, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna add it into this automation here. Normally you would use this in, say, a bedroom or you would use it in the living room, but we're gonna add a pressure sensor and that's gonna be a device trigger. And we're going to look for our couch sensor. And we're going to check for when it becomes moist. Now, moist means contact, dry means no contact. It's just the way that this sensor is configured. So that is going to be our trigger and we're going to add a trigger of motion onto there. So if somebody is sitting on the couch, then it is going to know someone is in the room. 
and again that will trigger our motion action which will turn on the light so that is a third way of detecting for presence within the room so not only are we using our sensor to make sure that there is somebody walking around in the room but we can also check to make sure that a device is on so we could actually change this desktop plug here to say the tv so if the tv gets turned on then we know someone is in the room and then we have a pressure sensor down here as well so when someone is sitting on the couch we will turn the lights on because again we know someone is in the room again down here in our no motion section we can add another condition and we can add our couch sensor to this here and again we can say when it is moist so we can check for three different things now so when no motion is triggered by our present sensor so when the sensor believes that there is no one in the room it will check the computer to make sure that that's on if it is we know that the sensor has given a false trigger so it will leave the light on and if both of those things were to fail, if the computer was saying there was no one in the room, maybe we're just sat in the room but we're, we've not got the computer on, the pressure sensor will detect us and that will know that we're still here even if the computer's not on and even if the sensor has given off a false trigger. So now we can go ahead and save that and we can save that as our motion test automation. And we can go ahead and test all of those different variables to make sure it is doing exactly what it should be. There we have it. That is how you can create your very own effective presence automation. Now, the more sensors and devices that you can reference, the more effective and the more accurate that automation will become. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then leave a like and drop a comment letting us know what you would like to see in future videos. But for now, I will see you in the next video.